Hey guys, welcome back. Today in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this kind of storm animation within After Effects, primarily using Element 3D and Chapcut in particular. So before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. So as you can see, we have this nice cloudy background all created in particular. We have these rain particles also created in particular. We also have this nice 3D text, which is created in Element 3D, and we're going to be taking a look at how to set this all from scratch within After Effects, how to composite everything in, as well as some final color correction, color grading, and some other compositing tips, such as the depth compositing and such like that. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to create a new composition, and this is going to be our main composition, so I'm going to call this one Main Comp. I'm going to make mine 720p at 24 frames a second and approximately 5 seconds long. Of course, you can extend this and add on to it if you want, but I'm going to get you started on this particular animation. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And I'm just going to clear some of my uh, comps here. So now we're starting fresh. We have our main composition. Let's go ahead and create another new composition. We'll call this one our smoke particles. And this is going to be our custom particular particle that we're going to use. And we're going to make it 640 by 360 and hit OK. So let's go ahead and create our custom particle. Let's create a new solid layer. And this is going to be our smoke cloudlet layer. So let's go ahead and call this, uh, I guess, smoke particle. Hit OK. And we're going to use a fractal noise. So under noise and grain, let's go ahead and select fractal noise. And right off the bat, we have a nice fractal. Let's go ahead and get the ellipse tool and um, let's draw a nice round mask little oval and then we can just position it and let's go ahead and start deforming this thing because right now we're trying to create the custom smoke particles for the clouds and this is kind of uniform so let's go ahead and just try to add some variation to this cloud particle here go ahead and click around and just change some of the points until you get something that looks very uh uh, not uniform. We'll hit F on the keyboard and feather it out. So now we have our nice fluffy cloud particle. Let's go ahead and hop into the fractal noise parameter and add some contrast. Maybe we can decrease the brightness a little bit. And we'll also play around with the transform to control how much detail we have in our cloud. So I'm going to leave it around 96%. And um, crank up the complexity just by a little bit. So we have more detail and just like that we have our custom cloud particle let's go ahead and add some animation here so i'm going to hold down alt or option on the mac and select the evolution and i'm going to type in time times 40 and that's just going to add some animation to our cloud particles and we're not going to be using this particular animation or this particular evolution here we're using the evolution to allow par particular to select a random frame so that we can have different cloud particles um, in our particle system. So now that we have different particles, uh, or guess different cloud particles each frame, we can use we can tell particular to uh, use different frames. That's more variation here. So the key is variation. So just like that, we're done with our custom particle. Let's go ahead and hop back into our main composition and get started with this animation. So first of all, I'm going to drag my smoke particle that we just created into the composition, and we're going to shut it off because we don't need to see it. We'll go ahead and create a new solid layer. We'll call this one uh, Cloud Particles. And we'll go to Effect. Under Trap Code, we'll select Trap Code Particular. So now we have a nice particle system. Let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to go to the Emitter tab. I will first of all reduce the number of particles for now. And then we'll change the Emitter type from Point to Box so that our particles emit in a nice box area. We'll also increase the emitter size in X and emitter size in Z as well as the uh, emitter size in Y just a little bit. We'll also go ahead and tone down the velocity. I'm going to set my velocity to around 20 so that the particles are just kind of floating around and um, let's go ahead and move forward so we'll go down to the emission extras. We'll turn the pre-run to 100 so that our particles are already emitting before I mean, the comp starts. We'll hop into the particles and we'll change the life from 3 to around 10 seconds long. So it's going to last through the whole um, comp here. 
Now for the particle type, we don't want to use spheres here. We want to use our cloudlet particles. Now, the reason why we're not using the cloudlet particle built in within, within a particular is because um, it's not very detailed as you can see. It's mostly um, a whole bunch of spheres combined to create this kind of puffy smoke, but it's not as detailed as our custom particle here. So instead of using the cloudlet, we're going to use our sprite. And then under the texture, we're going to select our layer. So our smoke particles composition that we just created. And it's warning us that's too big, but we'll just ignore it. So now if we increase the size, you can see that we're using our custom particle for our particle system here. Now, right now they're all uniform because it's set to current time. So we're going to set the time sampling from current time to random still frame. So particular is going to go through the whole composition and select a random frame for the particles so that each particle is somewhat different. And then we can always just change it up by playing around with the random seed. We'll also um, hop into the size. Maybe we'll increase it up a little bit. And then we will um, go to opacity over life. We'll select this one here, so it's going to fade in and then fade out. We'll also tone down the opacity. We kind of want to make our cloud somewhat transparent. You know, maybe around 17 or 20%. Um, we'll also go to the transfer mode, change it to screen so we have a nice blending. And um, just like that, I think we are set for that. We'll also increase the size randomness to add some more variation again the key is variation we'll also increase the opacity randomness and let's go ahead and tweak some of this emitter settings so just like that now we have somewhat of a three-dimensional cloud particle system so if I create a new camera and we can actually rotate around this thing you get actual 3D depth, but that is nothing new. So let's go ahead and work on our rain particles. So very similarly, we're gonna create another new solid. We're gonna call this rain particles. We'll apply effect, trap code, particular, and we will go into the emitter tab again. We're gonna pull up the position pretty high up, uh, you know, above the frame here. We'll change the emitter type from point to box we will go ahead and just move forward a little bit. We will increase the emitter size in X and increase the emitter size in Z. So as you see here, we're just gonna move it up just a little bit more so we don't see it. And um, we will go ahead and go down to the physics and we'll go to the gravity and change the gravity from zero to around 2000. And that's really gonna pull the particles down here. So if I just solo the rain particles, you can see that we have our particles just falling down we may need to increase the X just a little bit more and increase the number of particles. So right now it doesn't really look like rain, but if we enable the motion blur for the layer as well as the composition, you, we have these uh, we have this really nice interesting rain here. So if we do a RAM preview, you can see that we're getting a pretty intensive rain. And we also want to turn on the pre-run so we don't get that weird emptiness in the beginning. We'll also go to the particles. We'll also uh, maybe change the size randomness up a little bit, opacity randomness up a little bit, and decrease the opacity. And um, you know, just like that, I think we are set for the rain. And again, if we rotate around this, you can see that we actually have, uh, I guess, a 3D particle system with our rain and clouds. And we'll just put this underneath our cloud here. So pretty interesting, nice environment. Let's go ahead and start doing some basic color correction and kind of blending all this thing together. So let's go ahead and select our cloud particles first and we will go to effect. We'll go to color correction and we'll go to curves. And then we're just going to add maybe a little contrast to this thing. And right now I'm just dialing a temporary look right now. So I'm going to go for kind of a blue greenish uh, kind of sci-fi look. So I'm going to crank up the blue a little bit, maybe crank up the green a little bit and then maybe decrease the reds a little bit. So we kind of have this cool color. Kind of adjust some of this. And then maybe add some more contrast. So now it's looking a little bit more violent. We can also maybe decrease the highlights just a little bit. 
like that. We'll go into the rain particles. Again, we'll do the same thing. We'll go to effect curves. We will actually add some more contrast to this thing. We'll also change the color to kind of a light blue. Like that. Now that we have the environment kind of set up, let's go ahead and take a look at 3D text. So for the 3D text, I'm going to be using Element 3D from Video Copilot. I'm going to create a new text layer. And I'm going to type in our text. I'm going to call this um, 3D Storm. And um, we'll turn that layer off because we don't need to use that. Again, it's a matte layer or, or a reference layer. And then we're going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll call this uh, text. And we'll apply Effect. Video Copilot Element 3D. We'll hop into the custom layers. Under Path Layer 1, I'm going to select our 3D Storm text here so that After Effects or Element 3D is actually referencing to this particular 3D Storm text. We'll go into the scene setup and we'll hit Extrude. And that's going to extrude our text. And then he, from here, you can create your own bevels, add your own materials to it, even import your Cinema 4D text, whatever you want. But I'm going to use a preset bevel. And I'm going to select the, let's see here, the professional bevel because why wouldn't you want to be professional? So I'm going to go into the um, material settings here and just kind of tweak some of these settings. I'm going to go into the, the bevel 4 and maybe change the color from a white to maybe a darker color, like gray. We'll also go into the chrome front texture. We'll also decrease that color a little bit. And, um, you know, we'll hit OK. So now we have our 3D text within our scene. It doesn't look really um, nice at all right now. So I'm going to rotate the camera a little bit. So it doesn't really look integrated, but we'll work on it. We will go ahead and maybe go back into scene setup and we can decrease the reflection a little bit as well as the specular just a little bit. I also want to change the environment here because our environment doesn't really match so well. So I'm going to maybe check the underpass blurred to map the reflections. So now we kind of have a darker image. I'm going to go ahead and um, create a new light and uh, we'll call this one uh, light and we will change the color to a nice warm color and hit OK. And then I'm going to position this text kind of far back until where the text looks pretty decent here. And then maybe I can go into the layer settings and maybe just crank up the light just a little bit more, maybe around 10%. So just something that we can have a specular highlight for. So you see the light's kind of in front. And it's going to create kind of a nice gleam across the text as it sweeps across. And this is not the best lighting, but it will definitely um, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and it was very simple to do. So we can also go to the text. You can even play around with the um, environment. So we can go to the environment under render settings. And then we can go to rotate environment. Maybe we can rotate it a little bit, see an interesting angle here. Be right there and um, definitely play around with the lighting so we can switch through the lighting additional lighting we can increase the brightness of multiple uh, lights we can also go into um, add lighting and switch through the different types of preset lights so we can switch through go to ambient we can go to kind of aqua so more blue we can go to product dramatic even uh, cinema here so just, you know, go through, check it out, some different lights. So I'm going to go with the default lights. And um, as you can see here, it still doesn't look too um, well composited at all. You know, the particles are directly behind the text. Um, our text needs some color correction, some color grading, and things like that. But we're going to do that in the next lesson. So in the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at compositing the text a little bit better, um, you know, adding the depth pass in and compositing the depth pass within the element layer.
as well as do some color correction, color grading, as well as doing the overall color correction and grading, and just taking a look at how to enhance this animation just a little bit more. So that's what we're doing in the next lesson. Until next time, my name is Vincent Nguyen, and I'll see you guys next time.